留学するために来たんです。留学。留学。はい。I lived in China for six years, Japan for two years.、Yeah. Wow, wow, six years. That's amazing. So she's like super fluent in Chinese. Hey guys, this video is sponsored by Rosetta Stone, the leading language learning company for over 25 years. Learning a new language isn't easy, but Rosetta Stone offers the tools needed to help you achieve confidence in speaking in your chosen second language. Whether it's for a job, travel, or just for fun, Rosetta Stone's got your back. I was able to test out Rosetta Stone for myself in a video uploaded on my channel and loved it for all levels. I wish I had something like this when I was younger and learning Japanese because back then all we had were textbooks and paper flashcards. Rosetta Stone is easy to use and even has the option for an online language tutor. Better yet, I'm giving you an amazing option to get a discount on your subscription price or a lifetime offer for unlimited access to the app and program for only $199 total. You have it for a lifetime. It allows you to learn as many languages as you would like with only one account forever. So don't miss out on this opportunity to grow, learn, and bridge the gap between cultures using Rosetta Stone's amazing language program. The links are down below. Why is it so difficult for us to learn a language? I see many people struggle, myself included, to get better at Japanese. We say things like, I wish I was better at this language, or I wish I could understand what they're saying. We get nervous when we move abroad to try to communicate when it comes to daily tasks. When you throw yourself into the real world of Japan, you struggle and you wonder why. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to meet a friend I haven't seen since、uh, maybe two years ago, but she's actually a friend from junior high school. So she lived in China for a really long time and she also lives in Japan. Well, now she lives in Japan, but she's fluent in both languages. Now it's a gloomy day. I don't know if it's gonna rain. Hopefully it doesn't, but、um, I can't wait for you guys to meet my friend. It's so hot wearing a mask, but I didn't wear any lipstick today because I wasn't expecting to not wear a mask. But I'm taking it off because there's nobody around. And I'm heading to Ueno right now and I'm gonna meet up with my friend. We're gonna go get some sushi or some lunch around Ueno Station and just have a little bit of a chat and just enjoy the outdoors today. Doors on the right side will open. We tend to see language as foreign, something that is separate from who we are. But language is who we are. It's a deep part of us that wants to come out. We want to communicate. Everyone has the ability to speak any language they want to. We don't have to sound native or be native to understand and communicate, to tell stories. It's not necessary. That place over there, it looks very Western style home. You gotta get that log. Get the log, get the log. We've been looking for a place to sit for like an hour. Well, This'll do. <laughs> All right, we found a spot. It's not a log. We're sitting <laughs> on an actual bench now. Yay. In this beautiful little forest where there's like nobody. This is my friend. Her name is? An Ming. That's my Chinese name. I lived in China for six years, Japan for two years.、Yeah. Wow, wow, six years. That's amazing. So she's like super fluent in Chinese and really fluent in Japanese. I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> that's what we're here to talk about today because a lot of you guys are saying that, like, oh, I want to come to Japan or oh, I want to learn, you know, Japanese, but I'm 30 or I'm, it's too late, you know? 
So I feel like I wanted to get given a little bit of an interview. She's actually a friend of mine from junior high school, so we've known each other for a really long time. She's like, from what, Michigan. 15, 16 years? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and it's so crazy because we kind of, you know, found each other on the other side of the world. She learned language way later in life, and I just want to show you some proof. And I don't know if you can give my viewers any tips on learning the language and why you got so good, because people think it's always impossible. Honestly, it's only impossible if you say it's impossible. It's impossible if you give up. <laughs> it's impossible if you give up and it's impossible if you keep saying like, oh, it's so hard. I'd like to hear them say that to the 80 year old Japanese people who I taught English to. <laughs> Are any of them like really good? They were, some of them were good. They were learning at 80 years old. So if you think 30 is too late, you should go talk to them. And I feel like if you don't enjoy it, then you're not gonna get good. Because if you don't enjoy learning a language, then you're just never gonna well, excel, right? Well, some people don't know how to learn it. They pick a very boring way. To learn it and then in that case you wouldn't enjoy it but there are funner ways to learn than just from a book she speaks japanese and chinese so fluently you could you should check her channel out it's called <laughs> oriental pearl and she just makes video mostly videos about interacting with people around yep. japan and china so you can just see like she when did you start learning Japanese, you said? I started learning Japanese in 2015 and Chinese in 2012, and that was uh, long after I was a child. <laughs> yeah, like, that's like when you start, like around college years and yeah, stuff. And yeah. But the thing, like how, did, how do you think you got better? One of it was a money investment. I had to put out money because after I spent all that money on language learning and came all the way to Japan, I'm like, okay, I cannot just let this go. I cannot just not study this after I made this huge investment. You know, it was kind yeah. of like an investment in myself and I would feel like it was a Guilty. total waste of my time yeah. and money if I just gave up after that. So I put that risk out there, went into the school and paid money for the classes and I'm like, I'm gonna learn something. <laughs> Having that time investment, that money investment pushed me because I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna waste time and money. I, I'm committed to this, fully committed. If you wanna grow or like make a change in your life or something like you and you invest in it, it's, it's, it, it makes you more motivated and more committed to completing whatever you're investing in your, your life. It's just the same as like life coaching or something. Like people mm -hmm. invest money. I invested in business coaching. So like, you know, I invested a lot of money into that and I'm like, I am not gonna fail. Like, I am gonna actually do it. I think the problem is a lot of people see the results of that. Okay, where I am today, where other people are today, what the videos look like when you mm -hmm. have enough confidence to post them. But you don't see all the hard work that went into that. Yes. So they get this idea that certain people are good at languages and mm -hmm. other people are not. That's, a good that's idea. not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have any special ability with language. I think it's a little bit more about willpower, how much time, how much sacrifice you put into it. Some people think, see the finished product, you see the work after it's all done. I struggled a lot. There were many, many times, many times where I wanted to give up, especially when I was a beginner. And that is the biggest hurdle. That's the, the point that a lot of people stop because they get discouraged. They feel like there's yeah. no end in sight. And that's when you're most vulnerable, I think. Uh, I had gotten made fun of in China when I first moved there by my students. Oh my, my students gosh. made fun of me. They were brutal. Like kids will just tell you like it is. But well, kids don't hold anything oh back. My. I said some things to my students in Chinese and they, they mocked me. Uh, I, I mean, they were kids. I can't get too humiliated by a bunch of kids, but I felt bad about it. Like these kids mm. making fun of my Chinese and I would leave the classroom oh. and feel like, wow, I suck, man. You have to accept being imperfect. You yeah. have to accept making mistakes because if you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. So making mistakes is key, but some people are embarrassed to make mistakes, especially many Japanese adults that I taught did not want to make mistakes. They would think about sentences for a long time, but it is essential. So a lot of perfectionists have trouble with language learning because they don't want to be wrong, but you have to, especially in the beginning. The answer is simple. We can't learn Japanese because we think we can't learn Japanese. So we give up. We see the progress other people made and see it as something so out of our reach that it's impossible. Our thoughts shape our reality in everything we do. If we think we don't have time to study, then we don't have time to study. If we think we're too old, then we're too old. If we say something is hard, it's hard. It takes work and progress, but complaining that it's hard will make us overthink. 
and it won't make it any easier to do the task. Okay, this is this is my Japanese husband. I have a, a Mexican husband, and I also have a um, European hun husband. Dang. <laughs> well, my husband is Japanese, right? Like to throw Are you Japanese? Word. And this is my American wife. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, okay, so Ueno has a lot of like Meiji period type things. <laughs> we see all these cool buildings. Oh, can we go in there? Oh, we can. Look, there's like a little shop. <gasps> this is so cool. Okay, so now I'm starting to speak like I'm from Michigan now. Because <laughs> I'm around you. <laughs> You do, you still sound like it. I thought it was gone. I was like, oh my gosh. So this is a school, but it looks really small. There's a little, little shop here. I haven't explored in so long. This feels so good. Yeah. I'm on my way now. ことないですこれはどんなゲームですかアメリカ はい。日本が好きだった。もちろんです。嫌いならこんないですよね。ああ。川崎。川崎。あの、鳥の名前。ああ、綺麗。これは地図ですか川の宝石って。高そう。川の宝石。わあ、すごい。勉強になりました。<
Stop telling yourself that it's impossible. It's only as impossible as you make it. This is the coolest little street. Actually, I've never been down here. Yanaka is like an old um, street. There's lots of cafes. We're near a cemetery right now. Yanaka Cemetery, I think. Oh, there's those little rain spirits. This is so cute. Yeah, like they keep the rain away or like stop the rain or whatever. Are they to keep the rain from falling or to make rain fall? Um, I think stop, it's right? Just, it's stop rain, yeah. Stop the rain, yeah. okay. So say like kids make those when, like say tomorrow is going to fall in the rain and they want it to be This is a cool water bottle. Look. <laughs> so I just met one of my subscribers and she's from Venezuela, right? Yeah. That's so awesome. And it's your first time in Japan? Yes. So that's so cool. <laughs> what are you planning on doing today in Japan? Oh, we're going to the temple. Uh, to Nesu Shrine. Oh, okay. I... Because here is very beautiful, it's small but very nice. We're talking about blood types. So Ryuji is a B type. In Japan, they take blood types super seriously, right? They so say most Japanese are type A. Is it? Oh yeah. Yeah. But Ryuji is a B, so he right. like doesn't fit in. Nobody likes it. He's it? supposed to be outgoing, but disorganized and um, a little Just, like, don't really care about other people. And My mom said I think she was B. Is there a B positive? Yeah. Yeah, it's B. My mom, I think, is B positive. Hmm. I don't know which one. Be positive. <laughs> <laughs> what is the cultural difference between Japan and China? But you were talking about how the first year is the, first hardest, year is the year. hardest year. The first year is the absolute hardest yeah. year when you move to a new country, especially because of the language, because you have to make all your mistakes in the very beginning to learn. Yes. So you just feel lost, you feel stupid, you feel like you regret your decision, did I do the right thing? And everyone goes through this honeymoon period where it's really wonderful yes. and you're on vacation for it's the true. three or six they, months. There's actually a science, like honeymoon phase, crisis phase, right. and then like you just, there's a loop. And a lot of people break at the crisis phase, mm -hmm. and it's because of the language and the culture and everything, mm -hmm. and you just feel lost and, and silly, and you look silly when you don't understand stuff or you mess up, and you Same just have over it. Yeah. When you were in the States. Yep. You want a cheese dog? I've never heard of a cheese dog. What is a cheese dog? It's a dog with cheese. Oh, it's this? <laughs> what are you looking at? That's a cheese dog. That looks like a Chinese finger trap. Wait, is there a hot dog in it or no, something? It's a cheese, that's it. Okay. <laughs> cheese inside. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> weird. You're making it weird. <laughs> it looks like uh, string cheese in there. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> That's it. for the first time in like how many months? Like six Whatever. months. Hey, we're at karaoke. Don't come for me. It's open. <laughs> okay? We're going because it's open. <laughs> and it says to sit two meters apart from the people that you're singing with. But uh, we came together. I gotta stay away from my husband. No, go. Yeah. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> 